actually have the coordinated damage to lock anyone down before Mako can bring them back to life. In goes JJ, they just explode Showmaker. He is so important for their team fight and he goes golden as well. He's got the Sterics, he's got the Chrono Shift. It's an immortal job in trying to win the team fight and EDG have lost no one. In goes Barrel once again, but it's going to be a sacrifice and Darmwon Kia are left with corpses on the rift. And EDG have done it, Atlas! Brute force right into the face of Domwon. We have the Pick'em fan data. 86% think that Domwon will win the finals versus EDG. Who do you think is going to win this finals? What is your prediction? EDG wins it. I'm, 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 okay. I'm, I'm sitting on my Wait, bed what? praying every night. EDG 3 0s damn one. I'm not kidding anymore. This isn't a hot take. I'm dead serious. So I, I see. So after T1 loss, you actually became delusional. What's up, everyone? I'm Captain Flowers, and I want to welcome you back to the Outplay by Play World's Edition. Last week, we broke down what many thought was the finals before finals, and I told you all that we would get to the real finals in due time. Well, that time is now. Today, we're going to look at EDG's statement victory in game number one to silence their doubters in an absolute banger of a game. Let's take a deep dive into the action and see how the Chinese squad dismantled the defending world champs to set the tone. As the game kicked off, it was a quiet laning phase from both sides. That was, of course, until EDG decided they wanted some action and looked to set up a beautiful play to take first blood. With vision priority through the entire bot side river, watch as Viper and Mako first hard shove the minion wave into the Damwon turret and look for a roam. As they walk up, you can see pings are spammed in the mid lane, and initially it looks like a dive onto Showmaker was the plan. But pay attention to JJ, who understands that a jungle invade is possible with the second red buff spawning at 650, and pings towards there instead. As EDG make their way through the jungle, they go unseen through the fog of war, and Mako drops a control ward to further clear vision and steal the enemy red. It's at this point that EDG see a window of opportunity and Scout crashes the minion wave before joining his team to make a play. Now pay attention to the details. Instead of walking through the tri brush for a typical gank, they use Ryze's Realm Warp for the four man jump scare and delete Barrel. But just a minute later, as both teams look to contest the Rift Herald, it's Damwon who returned the blow onto JJ, who was a deer in the headlights after blast coning himself into the pit. However, What's important to note here is the drafts on both sides. EDG go for a classic front-to-back teamfighting comp with heavy engage and sustain in Jarvan, who becomes a double meat shield thanks to Zillion's Chrono Shift to stay alive. At the same time, Jin, Rise, and Graves act as the follow-up cavalry to root and burst down anyone caught in the J4 Cataclysm. On the flip side, Damwon draft a comp with lots of burst damage and mobility to weave in and out of skirmishes for picks, while utilizing the Yasuo Wind Wall to shield off EDG's projectile-heavy composition. And Barrel? Well, he was running Predator Rakan to maximize roam potential and look for those juicy, juicy engages all across the map. 13 minutes in, we see exactly that. Watch as Barrel takes advantage of the Predator move speed to close the distance and flash for the engage onto Scout who gets obliterated by a chain of CC under his own tower. But just shortly after, we get a glimpse of how powerful the EDG composition actually is in our first team fight of the game. After EDG secure the Cloud Drake, it's Damwon who looked to work the other side of the map with the second Rift Herald spawning. At a first glance, it looks great for the defending champs, as Showmaker and Ghost burst Mako down to just a quarter of his health, while Canyon is safely chipping away at Shelly. But look at how the LPL champions collapse. As JJ walks down, he instantly flashes in for the two-man cataclysm onto both Ghost and Barrel. Ghost immediately flashes away, but with Barrel trapped, Viper opens the curtain call in the back line, and Scout moves in for the root onto his fellow countrymen as the Damwon support meets his fate. Now pay attention to JJ, who really should be dead at this point. Use Gore Drinker and Smite to restore his health before walking back for a zillion revive. From there, the Damwon dominoes begin to fall as the rest of EDG move forward to first delete Canyon, then Khan, while Viper steals the Rift Herald for the cherry on top in a three for none. And the LPL champs would build on their advantage, summoning Shelly Bot to take the first turret of the game and secure the Infernal Drake in the process. 24 minutes into the game, with Soul Point up, 
you can see both teams dance back and forth as they vie for the crucial objective. But once again, it's the EDG composition that edges Dom1 out. Take a look at Showmaker, who distorts over the wall to chunk Scout down to nearly a third of his health. Ghost follows up with the Zig's Bomb, but once again, the Zillion Revive comes into play. At the same time, JJ finds the three-man Cataclysm to prevent any chance of a Dom1 onslaught before dashing out. Then, as Scout flashes away to safety, Viper follows up with a Curtain Call to chunk DK down. Just like that, EDG had done just enough, and with the advantage in health after Scout's reset, they moved to Soul Point. 29 minutes into the game, after some even trades in kills and towers, both teams look to set up with Baron in play and Ocean Soul around the corner. It's at this point that Damwon have full vision control around the Baron pit and begin chipping away at the objective. As EDG walk up, they can't see a single thing in the Baron pit until JJ drops a flag to reveal the Baron's health bar. Now keep your eyes on Showmaker, who's sitting on a control ward in the pixel brush, looking to burst down any members of EDG. Fortunately for Showmaker, JJ steps forward and immediately gets half his health chunked down. Unfortunately for Showmaker, Viper is still alive. Showmaker is actually able to distort away, but with the boosted movement speed from Zillion, Viper charges forward and hits the star mid laner with an auto before perfectly timing the snare to stop him in his tracks. Then, JJ flashes forward with a Cataclysm to lock him down as Showmaker gets eviscerated. And so, with Showmaker dead, it's all but over for the side of Dom1, as EDG work together to pick them off one by one. Watch as JJ uses an E plus Q combo to send Ghost Airborne before popping Stopwatch to stall for the follow-up. As Viper opens up the curtain call, Scout struts right in to Root Canyon as EDG instantly delete him too. Then, with the rest of Damwon running for the hills, it was really just a duck hunt as Flandre finds both Barrel and Khan for the double kill and Viper finishes off Ghost for the ace. With that fight, EDG would go on to secure both Baron and the Ocean Soul before ripping through the Dom Juan defense, leaving just the Nexus turrets and top inhibitor turret remaining for an 8,000 gold lead. 34 minutes into the game, with super minions marching down mid and bot, EDG looked for a siege to put the final nail in the coffin. As they approach the base, JJ, who had been a beast this entire game, goes in for the final engage with a flash into Cataclysm to catch both Ghost and Canyon. Ghost once again immediately flashes away, and Canyon is forced to pop Crescent Guard to stay alive. From that point on, it's just desperation for the LCK squad as Barrel flashes in for the Hail Mary knockup onto Viper, who really sees it coming from a mile away and dodges just out of the range. Barrel then immediately gets popped, and with the curtain call coming out, Dom1 retreat for their lives. But with EDG charging forward and out for blood, Dom1 gets mopped the f up. Showmaker desperately tries to fend off the attack, but gets rooted by a chain of CC to meet his death, with Ghost following suit just shortly after. Then, with just Canyon and Khan remaining, it was a fight to pad the stats as EDG obliterate Dom1 in a statement game one for the ace and the end to an absolute scorcher. I'm Captain Flowers, and that's it for this week's episode of the Outplay by Play. Let me know what you think in the comments. Did Dom1 get a little too overconfident, or were EDG just playing on another level? Be sure to follow at LOL Esports on Twitter for everything League of Legends Esports. And we'll catch you back here next time where we break down game number five of the World Finals in our final episode of the Outplay by Play in 2021.